Two weeks ago, the same day that we learned that a Chinese spy balloon had been spotted in the sky above Montana, that very same day, the largest hospital system in northwest Florida, Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare, was brought to a near screeching halt by a much less visible security threat, a cyber attack. The entire hospital system had to effectively ditch the computers and work on pen and paper. They had to divert most emergency medical patients to other hospitals and cancel all non-emergency surgeries. It wasn't until today that Tallahassee Memorial was able to start transitioning some of their hospital system back online and off paper. They are still diverting some emergency medical patients as of today. Now, I don't make this comparison to blame China for the cyber attack in Tallahassee, Florida. It was most likely the work of criminals. And it happens a lot. The cybersecurity firm Emisoft counted 290 hospitals hit by ransomware attacks last year alone. I also don't mean to diminish concern about China's spy balloon program as a security threat because we really don't know how damaging that could end up being. But we do know exactly how much of a security threat cyber attacks are to this country. In 2014, there was the hack of the federal government's Office of Personnel Management, where hackers stole information on more than 22 million government workers, their families, and everyone who had undergone government background checks, including the family of yours truly. In 2015, there was the hack of the healthcare company Anthem that exposed the personal data of nearly 80 million people. And in 2017, there was the Equifax breach, which exposed private data, like social security numbers, for more than 140 million Americans. And if memory serves, that included me. The U.S. has explicitly blamed China for all of those attacks. Joining us now is Nicole Perlroth. She was a New York Times cybersecurity reporter for a decade and is now an advisor for Biden's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA. Her book, This Is How They Tell Me the World Ends, I'm glad they told you and not me, The Cyber Weapons Arms Race, comes out in paperback a week from today. And she has been loud and proud about how she believes the general public's reaction to the Chinese spy balloon is, will we say, overinflated pun intended. Nicole, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Um, what, what a loving topic to talk about. The spy balloon has captured everyone's imagination. I think because it's just a crazy thing, right? Like these UFOs flying over the country. It is weird to me that we do not pay nearly the same heed to attacks that actually affect almost every single person in this country. Um, how and why do we change that? How do we change that narrative? And why do you think that is? I think it has been an incredibly frustrating news cycle for those of us who've been covering Chinese cyber espionage and sabotage for the last 10 years. You know, I always thought, what is it going to take to get the American public and policymakers to wake up? If we could see a bomb go off at every company that has been breached, maybe that would do it. And now I think maybe it's a balloon over every company <laughs> yes. that has been compromised and over every American. Because when I first started covering this at the New York Times, it was IP theft. I mean, there's been more than a thousand American companies have been breached since 2018 by China for IP theft. Wow. Chris Ray said, um, China has taken more business data and personal data than any other nation state actor combined. You know, Keith Alexander, former director of the NSA, said this is the greatest transfer of wealth in human history. Wow. I mean, the balloon, people don't know exactly what was being captured by the balloon um, tech. Some people think it may have been views of the military installations across the country. It's unclear as yet. Why, you know, when you talk about the value of personal data, can, I mean, to just be a dummy about it, what, what is so valuable in it? Why is it the largest transfer of wealth? So originally, I think it was IP theft. You know, this was China yeah. trying to catch up. You know, they were sick of being the world's manufacturer. The shortest way to catch up is steal the IP, shortcut the R&D process, hand that IP over to their state-owned enterprises and make hay. Then we started seeing these attacks of Equifax, Anthem, the Office of Personnel Management, and Marriott, actually. And I think what they were doing, what cybersecurity experts have said for a long time, is they've been building out a database of Americans' personal information, particularly government workers who stay at Marriott and who applied for a security clearance at OPM, to see where Chinese citizens are traveling and staying at the same time as potential American government workers 
to build out a counterintelligence database wow. of potential Chinese American spies. So that was the thinking originally. Now I think it shifted to uh, how much are they taking here? <laughs> because they have breached essentially data on every American. And of course, we can talk about TikTok and what kind of threat that poses to what people are now calling psychosecurity down the line. But essentially, we've seen them take the IP. We've seen them take the personal data. More than a year ago, uh, the US government declassified a report that a lot of Chinese hacks of our pipeline networks uh, were not IP theft. This was China actually trying to get a foothold into our pipeline systems for the event that they might need to sabotage those systems one day. So at a certain point, we have to ask ourselves, what haven't they taken? Yeah. And what about, I mean, China is obviously an aggressive actor when it comes to these attacks. But what about, for example, Russia? We know that they have a very aggressive posture in, say, Ukraine, and they are notorious in terms of their cyber threats and their cyber teams. What are they doing uh, independent of the Chinese? So I think the best explanation for the difference between the cyber threat from China and the cyber threat from Russia came from Paul Nakasone, the current director of the NSA, who said, Russia is the hurricane, China is climate change. Imminently- Neither of those things are good. Neither of those things are good, no. I mean, the thing is, Russia has been pushing the envelope on sabotage, particularly in Ukraine. A couple of years ago, we saw them shut the power down in Ukraine, yeah. not once, but twice. Uh, they inflicted an attack called the NotPetya attack, horrible name, but essentially it was an attack on most government agencies in Ukraine, but also their railway systems, their postal network, um, it didn't just hit every business in Ukraine, it hit every business that had even a single employee working remotely from Ukraine. So it hit Merck, it hit Maersk, it hit Mondelez. It paralyzed Merck's vaccine production lines that year. This was pre-COVID. You can imagine how bad it would have been during COVID. So they have been very aggressive about acts of cyber, cyber sabotage. Now in Ukraine, the cyber attacks have not been able to compete with the sort of horrific images we've seen on the yeah. ground. But it's not something to ignore. Yeah, yeah. We've seen them you know, plant malware in Ukrainian substations. It was eradicated, but they tried to take out the power. Um, just today, there was a report in Politico about a tool they call Pipe Dream that was discovered in development. No one has formally attributed it to Russia, but all signs point that way that looks to be the sort of Swiss army knife of critical infrastructure hacking tools. And it looks like it was designed to attack power grids and pipeline networks. And it could sabotage these networks. Now they've been fairly restrained with targeting these attacks at the West. I think, you know, my personal theory is that despite Putin's threats of nuclear threats and all the nuclear bluster, I think it's much more likely that if he were to retaliate for Western yes. support of Ukraine, it would be via cyber attacks. Nicole Perlroth with the good news on Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. They know Sorry. it's valuable and very important to keep in contact. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you so much. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day.